Hello, and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode, we're going to look, we're going to bring everything together we've looked at so far. We've looked at the idea of sequences, selection, and iteration. We've looked at the idea of creating a loop and going around that loop. And we've looked at if statements, which allow you to do if something, then something else, something else. So we're going to bring it all together in an algorithm about whether a number is prime or not. So prime numbers, I don't know if you remember that from school. Um, a number is prime if it is divisible only by itself and one. So let's say the number six. It's divisible by itself, six into six goes once evenly. It's divisible by one, but six also divides two evenly and three evenly. So we say six is not a prime number. Number seven is a prime number because the number seven only divides by itself and one. The number seven doesn't divide Six doesn't go into seven evenly, five doesn't go into seven evenly, four doesn't go into seven evenly, three doesn't go into seven evenly, and two doesn't go into seven evenly. So no number between the number itself and one, if no number between the number itself and one divides evenly into it, it's a prime number. If there's a number in between the number itself and one that does divide in evenly, we say it's not prime. So let's think of the example of the number nine. If we go backwards from nine, does eight divide evenly into nine, no it doesn't, does uh, seven divide evenly into nine, no it doesn't, does six divide evenly into nine, no it doesn't, does five divide evenly into nine, no it doesn't, does four divide evenly into nine. So it's seeming like nine might be a prime number, does three divide evenly into nine, oh three does divide evenly into nine and gives a remain no remainder. So we can conclude that nine is not a prime number but seven is a prime number. Let's think of the number eleven, that is a prime number as well because ten when you divide it into 11, it gives a remainder 9 into 11, 8 into 11, uh, 7 into 11, 6 into 11, 5 into 11, 4 into 11, 3 into 11, and 2 into 11. All when you divide them in gives a remainder or doesn't divide in evenly, whereas the number 12, um, obviously the number 4, the number 2, the number 3 divide in evenly and don't give a remainder. So that's what a prime number is. That's how I think of a prime number. What I think of a prime number is every other number other than itself and one. If every other number other than itself and one give a remainder when you divide them in, then it is, is a prime number. Whereas if there's a number in between the number and one that divides and gives no remainder, so let's say the number nine, three divides evenly into nine, so that means nine is not a prime number. So that's how we'll think about a prime number. 7 is prime because 6, 5, 4, 3 and 2 all give a remainder, so we say 7 is a prime. If um, that doesn't make sense, have a pop onto the internet and Google the Wikipedia page on prime number or something like that, just so that you're happy, because I want you to be happy that you get a prime number is a number that's only divisible by itself or one, or to put it a different way, it's not divisible by the numbers in between itself and one. So let's look at the pseudocode. Yeah, that's exactly what I've said. So 7, because 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2 give a remainder, we know 7 is prime. So the general principle is if the number is a, if a minus 1, a minus 2, a minus 3, a minus 4, all the way down to 2, if all of them, all divisions give a remainder, then we say a is prime. So here's the code. First draft, we're going to do this in two drafts just to make it easier. We call the program check if it's prime. We read in the value, and then we assign uh, we read in the value into a variable called a and then we assign a new value b and b gets the value of a minus 1. Now we keep on looping and checking if a divided by b divides in evenly and in that loop as well we'll de decrement b by 1 each time. So we'll keep on counting downwards and say um, a does a divide into B, uh, take one away from B, keep taking one away from B until we get to one and when B is one we'll stop the loop. We'll remember if any division gave an even result and if any of them gave an even result then the number is not prime. So all it takes is one division to have an even result. So for example with the number nine, eight into nine gives a remainder, seven into nine gives a remainder, six into nine gives a remainder, 5 into 9 gives a remainder, 4 into 9 gives a remainder, 3 into 9 does not give a remainder, 
2 into 9 gives a remainder. So because there is one division we did that gives no remainder, we said that the number 9 is not prime. So in the loop, we have to remember if we've ever, if any of the divisions give us an even, an even division, then we say the number is not prime, but if they all give a remainder, then we say the number is prime. So let's look at what that pseudocode actually looks like as a final draft. So we read in A, that's the nominator or the, the value we're checking is prime, and then the thing we're going to divide by is B, and we're going to start off by saying B is A minus 1. So that's the first value we're going to divide in. So if the number is 9, we'll divide it by 8, then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to have, and we said there was a special type of variable way, way back in an earlier video called Boolean. And we said a Boolean variable has only one of two values, it's either true or false. We're going to have a variable of that type, so a bucket, and it's going to store a value of either true or false. And the variable name or bucket name is going to be called is prime. And we're going to assume the number is prime at the start. We won't worry about why we're assuming it's true at start. We'll just set it to true at start. Then we're going to keep looping around doing divisions until B gets the value 1. So we're going to keep dividing A into B and we're going to reduce the value of B all the time. So if A divided by B and in the first instance B is A minus 1 gives no remainder, that is to say it divides in evenly, then we know this number is not prime. If the number is not prime then we should set the boolean variable is prime to be false because it isn't prime. And if then we take 1 away from B. So let's say that the very value we read in is A. Or A, A, A is the value we read in. Let's say we read in the number 9. So A is 9. That means B gets the value 8. Is prime is set to true? Is 8 equal to 1? No, it's not. So we go into the loop. If 9 divided by 8 gives no remainder. Well, 9 divided by 8 does give a remainder, so that if statement doesn't execute, then all we do is B gets B minus 1. B was 8, now it's 7. So we go in while we go back up to the loop. We check if 7 is not equal to 1, which it isn't, so then we go into the, the, the if statement. If 9 divided by 7 gives no remainder, 9 divided by 7 does give a remainder, so we don't do the then part. So as far as we're concerned so far, is prime is still true, because each division we're doing is giving a remainder, so we're assuming it's prime as we're going on. Now B gets decremented from 7 to 6. We check while uh, 6 is not equal to 1, which is not. And then we check if 9 divided by 6 gives a remainder. 9 divided by 6 does give a remainder, so that if statement is not true, so we don't go into the then part. We take 6 away from 1, we get 5. We go back up again. Is 5 not equal to 1? It is, so we do the if statement. 9 divided by 5, does it give a remainder? It does give a remainder. So we don't execute the if part. We get to 4. 4 is not equal to 1, that's true. So if 9 divided by 4 gives no remainder, which it doesn't, so then we don't do the if, the then part there. We take 1 away from b and it's 3. 3 is not equal to 1, that's true. If 9 divided by 3 gives no remainder. Now 9 divided by 3 does give no remainder, because 9 divided by 3 goes in three times with no remainder. So that means we do the then part and we, we had is prime set to be true at the start, now we're going to set it to false. So it's false now. Now we take 1 away and b is 2. Then we go up again, is 2 is not equal to 1, so we go in again. If 9 divided by 2 gives no remainder, 9 divided by 2 does give a remainder, so we don't go into the then part again. So is prime is still false. Since, since we set it the last time, take 1 away from b, b was 2, now it's 1. While 1 is not equal to 1, well 1 is equal to 1, so we finish the while loop. Then we check what value is prime after the while loop. If is prime is equal to false, which in the case of 9, it is false. So then we print out that the value 9 is not prime. If we did all the divisions and we had never gone into the bit if a divided by 2 gives no remainder, then is prime is equal to false, then is prime would be true. So if is prime was true, we'd print out the else bit that the number is prime. 
Let's do that for the number 7 now, just to make this clear. If this all makes sense to you already, please feel free to skip to the end of this video, but if it doesn't make sense, let's step through if it's the value 7. We read in A is 7, that means B is 6 is prime, we'll assume 7 is prime, which as it happens we know. B is 6, so 6 is not equal to 1, so we'll go into the while loop. Does 7 divided by 6 give no remainder? No, it gives a remainder, so we don't set is prime to be false. B gets the value B minus 1, so that means we take 1 away from 6 and it becomes 5. We go into the if statement again. Does 7 divided by 5 give no remainder? No, it gives a remainder, so we, we, we don't do the then part and we, we decrement again. So B becomes 4. Does 7 divided by 4 give no remainder? It doesn't, it gives a remainder, so we go back and go d down to 1. Uh, B becomes 3. Does 3 into 7 give no remainder? It doesn't. Uh, so we go down again. 2. B becomes 2. Does 2 into 7 give no remainder? It doesn't. It gives a remainder. So we don't go into the then part again. B takes 1 away and becomes 1. Then while 1 is equal to 1, which it's not, so then we exit the loop. So in that circumstance, when the number was 7, we had assumed is prime is true at the start. We never went into the statement where we said is prime to be false. So that means is prime is true. So we, when we execute the statement for the number 7, if is prime equals false, it is not false and has never been set to false. Therefore, we print out the else part of the if statement saying print that the number 7 is prime, end if and end program. So I know that's fairly head wrecking stuff. I want you to go back and play this video as many times as you need to before you get every element of what I'm saying. The, 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 the real trick I think in this is that we've got this Boolean variable. We set, it, we set it to true at the start, which means we're going to assume it's prime. We'll assume the number is prime, and if at any time we do a division between the number minus 1 and 2, and any of those divisions go in evenly, then that proves that the number isn't prime. So then we set that is prime to false. So think about the number 9. We divided 9 into 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and each division we're assuming it's true because 8 goes into 9 with the remainder, 7 goes into 9 with the remainder, 6 goes into 9 with the remainder, 5 goes into 9 with the remainder, 4 goes into 9 with the remainder, but 3 does not give a remainder, so that means 9 is not, is not prime. And then 2 goes into 9 with the remainder. Because there's one value that gives a, no remainder, the number 3, 9 is not a prime number. So we keep on looping through the divisions of the number minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, all the way down to 2. And if any division gives us no remainder, if that is, it divides in evenly, then we know the number is not prime, whereas if all the divisions, each of them gives a remainder or doesn't divide in evenly, then what that's telling us is this number is prime. So the number 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, each of them gives a remainder, whereas the number 9, 3 gives no remainder, therefore it's not prime. So as I said, keep going over this until it makes sense. This is combining selection, sequence and iteration. And a lot of our algorithms that we use from now on will use the same kind of logic as this. And I know it's fairly head-wrecking and sometimes it'll help people to implement this in a programming language to understand how it works. But this is, um, we're kind of halfway through the course now. And this is a bit of a pivot point in the course. If you spend a bit of time and actually work on this, you'll get what's going on. I, I think I said it in the first class when I, when I talked to you face to face, that programming is a skill. It's like learning to cycle or learning to swim or learning to drive. It's a lot of different parts you need to do. And, and when you start, you're focusing on the little mechanical bits. So let's say learning to drive, you're thinking about how to do the clutch, you're remembering to signal, you're remembering to mirrors, and it's hard to, you can't do all the parts together. It's one part at a time. So how I've taught this is each bit separately, but now we're bringing all the parts together in an algorithm like prime number calculation. And it's to keep working at it. And programming isn't something you can fake. It's a skill you have to develop through practice and looking at various algorithms and playing around with different ideas.
So uh, keep exploring this prime number algorithm until it makes sense for you. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.